Hi guys, we're here for our Bible in a Year challenge reading. And today we're on August 28th. That reading is going to come from Isaiah 34, Psalm 104, and Titus chapter 2. So Isaiah chapter 34. A message for the nations. Come here and listen, O nations of the earth. Let the world and everything in it hear my words. For the Lord is enraged against the nations. His fury is against all their armies. He will completely destroy them, bringing about their slaughter. Their dead will be left unburied, and the stench of rotting bodies will fill the land. The mountains will flow with their blood. The heavens above will melt away and disappear like a rolled up scroll. The stars will fall from the sky, just as withered leaves and fruit fall from a tree. And when my sword has finished its work in the heavens, then watch. It will fall upon Adam, the nation I have completely destroyed. The sword of the Lord is drenched with blood. It is covered with fat as though it had been used for killing lambs and goats and rams for a sacrifice. Yes, the Lord will offer a great sacrifice in the rich city of Basra. He will make a mighty slaughter in Adam. The strongest will die, veterans and young men too. The land will be soaked with blood and soil enriched with fat, for it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, the year when Adam will be paid back for all it did to Israel. The streams of Adam will be filled with burning pitch, and the ground will be covered with fire. This judgment on Adam will never end. The smoke of its burning will rise forever. The land will lie deserted from generation to generation. No one will live there anymore. It will be haunted by the horned owl, the hawk, the screech owl, and the raven. For God will bring the chaos and destruction to that land. It will be called the land of nothing, and its princes soon will all be gone. Thorns will overrun its palaces, nettles will grow in its forests, the runes will become a haunt for jackals and a home for ostriches. Wild animals of the desert will mingle there with hyenas, their howls filling the night. Wild goats will bleed at one another among the runes, and night creatures will come there to rest. There the owl will make her nest and lay her eggs. She will hatch her young and cover them with her wings. And the vultures will come, each one with its mate. Search the book of the Lord and see what he will do. He will not miss a single detail. Not one of these birds and animals will be missing, and none will lack a mate, for the Lord has promised this. His spirit will make it all come true. He has surveyed and divided the land and, de and deeded it over to those creatures. They will possess it forever from generation to generation. Okay, Psalm 104. Praise the Lord, I tell myself. O oh Lord, my God, how great you are. You are robed with honor and with majesty. You are dressed with a robe of light. You stretch out the starry curtain of the heavens. You lay out the rafters of your home in the rain clouds. You make the clouds your chariots. You ride upon the wings of the wind. The, wings are your, the winds are your messengers, flames of fire are your servants. You place the world in its foundation so it would never be moved. You clothe the earth with floods of water, water that covered even the mountains. At the sound of your rebuke, the water fled. At the sound of your thunder, it fled away. Mountains rose and valleys sank to the levels you decreed. Then you set a firm boundary for the seas so they would never again cover the earth. You make the springs pour water into ravines so streams gush down from the mountains. They provide water for all the animals, and the wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds nest beside the streams and sing among the branches of the trees. You send rain on the mountains from your heavenly home, and you fill the earth with the fruit of your labor. You cause grass to grow for the cattle. You cause plants to grow for people to use. You allow them to produce food from the earth, wine to make them glad, olive oil as lotion for their skin, and bread to give them strength. The trees of the Lord are well cared for, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests, and the storks make their homes in the firs. High in the mountains are pastures for the wild goats, and the rocks form a refuge for rock badgers. You made the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun that knows when to set. You, sent, you send the darkness, and it becomes night, when all the forest animals prowl about. Then the young lions roar for their food, but they are dependent on God. At dawn they slink back into their dens to rest. Then people go off to their work. They labor until the evening shadows fall again. O oh Lord, what a variety of things you have made. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Here is the ocean, vast and wide, teeming with life of every kind, both great and small. See the ship sailing along at Leviathan, which you made to play in the sea. Every one of these depends on you to give them their food as they need it. When you supply it, they gather it. You open your hand to feed them, and they are satisfied. But if you turn away from them, they panic. When you take away their breath, they die and turn again to dust. 
When you send your spirit, new life is born to replenish all the living on the, of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. The Lord rejoices in all he has made. The earth trembles at his glance. The mountains burst into flame at his touch. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live, and I will praise my God to my last breath. May he be pleased by all these thoughts about him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let all sinners vanish from the face of the earth. Let the wicked disappear forever. As for me, I will praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, in Titus chapter 2. Promote right teaching. But as for you, promote the kind of living that reflects right teaching. Teach the older men to exercise self-control, to be worthy of respect, and to live wisely. They must have strong faith and be filled with love and patience. Similarly, teach the older women to live in a way that is appropriate for someone serving the Lord. They must not go around speaking evil of others and must not be heavy drinkers. Instead, they should teach others what is good. These older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children, to live wisely and be pure, to take care of their homes, to do good, and to be submissive to their husbands. Then they will not bring shame on the word of God. In the same way, encourage the young men to live wisely in all they do. And you yourself must be an example to them by doing good deeds of every kind. Let everything you do reflect the integrity and seriousness of your teaching. Let your teaching be so correct that it can't be criticized. Then those who want to argue will be ashamed because they won't have anything bad to say about us. Slaves must obey their masters and do their best to please them. They must not talk back or steal, but they must show themselves to be entirely trustworthy and good. Then they will make the teaching about God our Savior attractive in every way. For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with self-control, right conduct, and devotion to God while we look forward to that wonderful event when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, and to make us his very own people, totally committed to what is right. You must teach these things and encourage your people to do them, correcting them when necessary. You have the authority to do this, so don't let anyone ignore you or disregard what you say. Okay. That is all for today's reading. We'll see you tomorrow.